head itself and I can see how that'd be so much simpler because you got some specialty tools for me. I do. Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to the start of today's video. Today we're going to be working on the EF Falcon or not really so much working on it, trying to pretty much just get this thing ready for roadworthy. So we need to replace the rear tires on it because they're pretty damn bad. You can have a look here. There's not really much tire left, not much tread left. That's because I think the person that previously owned the car did a few single pegs. It's definitely noticeable more on one side. I also want to talk about what we're going to be doing with this thing while the engine is getting ready. So while we're working on the barrel, we're probably not going to be touching this thing. We do need to um, get the transmission sorted and everything else before we start messing around with this stuff because I do want to be able to drive this thing while I am getting the Barra engine ready and I also want to take this thing to Heathkit to get a standard baseline time to see what this thing runs standard down the quarter mile. We're also going to be working on the Barra engine today so we're going to be tearing it down as much as we possibly can to my knowledge so we definitely don't need this intake planner because the uh, gassy doesn't have any ports for injectors. Um, if I get right down in there you probably can't even see it but see that little port that's where an injector would go they just cast uh, spots and they just need to be drilled from factory but what we're going to do instead is replace it with a BA slash BF NA intake plenum. So we're just going to be deleting essentially this whole part. And of course, we don't need any of this exhaust side too. So I'm going to be deleting all of that, obviously, because a turbo needs to come off the exhaust. So we need a standard turbo manifold. So through YouTube, the beauty of doing all this stuff and putting it all online, we already have some sponsorships on the way. I've had a talk to Sundeep at Ford Performance Salvage, and he's going to supply us some parts so we don't have to go to the wreckers and slave away there. Um, so we're going to need the power steering pump from him. I don't know if he's got an AC condenser as well, but uh, the man has been helping me out a lot over Instagram. Another special mention that we need to give is Michael from Dominated Motorsports. He's going to be sponsoring a bunch of parts. Without sponsorships, we'd have to keep this thing at a very budget-friendly level, but because we have these people on board, we can upgrade some parts and potentially get a better time on the track. So super thankful for these people, and I can't wait. So one other thing that we need to do today is get the engine up on a stand so we can start pulling off the lower sump. And we need to do that just to double confirm that this thing has the thicker rod. So it is a Barra BF Mark II. And for some reason, apparently after the years, so the second month of 2006, prior to that or during that stage is very hit and miss to see if you've got the thicker rods or not. So definitely after the 6th of the 2006, you have the thicker rods, but we don't entirely know that until we can take that sump off and have a look at the, uh, the connecting rods and check the part numbers. So unfortunately, Unfortunately, I don't have like a heavy duty stand or anything like that. So we are just going to have to put this thing back together and um, get the bolts for the back of the engine so we can then chuck it on. And I don't know if it's going to flex or anything. So I'm going to probably have to buy some wood to make sure that this thing doesn't ruin the engine stand. So yeah, we'll see. We'll see how we go. I know this place that I can go to to get some custom bolts. So we're going to go there today. Uh, we got ourselves some four bolts for the engine crane. Here we go. If you guys need some bolts and you're located Southeast Melbourne, this is the place to go to. I've always got the things that I need. And of course, we have some 10 uh, centimeter uh, high tensile bolties. So that'll go into the back of the barra. Hopefully they don't snap. Okay, we finally got back home. We have everything we need to chuck the engine on the engine stand. I've got a piece of wood as well that I'm gonna to use to prop it up on the front so it doesn't uh, ruin the stand because it seems like it's gonna stick so far out and it's a very small little stand. Anyway. So we have the barra finally mounted on the stand. That actually took quite a little bit of time. In the time lapse, you're not gonna really be able to tell, but damn, that was, it was heavy. It was really heavy engine. Um, I'm actually surprised that this engine stand that we got from Super Cheap Auto can actually hold this barra engine considering it's so long. I mean, it's a little bit worrying because there's a slight little tiny bend, but it does say that the overall capacity of this thing is 450 kilos. So I don't think the barra weighs um, anywhere near 450 kilos, pretty sure. Let me know in the comments what you guys think, but this is rated to 450 kilograms. It's just very long. 
long. We have also managed to put all the bolts in to the engine stands, so we've got them all um, in the actual block and not the sump itself, because if you put them in the sump, then you can't take it off, obviously. Shout out to Street Machine TV for actually uh, giving me that tip. Uh, I was just going through all their videos of them tearing down gas barrels, and that's what they seem to do, so. We're gonna go ahead and start removing all the intake manifold stuff. Probably gonna start just trying to remove the harness and all that and the exhaust manifold. It looks relatively simple and pretty straightforward. So yeah, just gonna rub all this stuff with the gas as well. Um, this is barely even held on. So yeah, I'll let you know how I go. Let you know the challenges. Should be pretty simple. Let's begin, baby. It may also seem like I know what I'm doing right now, but I can assure you I've never done this before. So here's a little update. It's been a few hours and uh, we've managed to get a lot off the barra than I thought that we originally would be able to do. Um, we've uh, managed to take off a lot of the plenum stuff and wiring harness off the barra itself. We've also managed to remove um, the top plenum as well. We've also removed the coil pack cover and you can see we've got this all exposed. These are the butterfly valves. They're almost like individual throttle bodies it looks like and the intake engine as well also has this so i believe at like uh lower rpm these will be closed and higher rpm bam those things open and then you got all the, all the baby power low down talking top top power we're almost ready to fully remove the plenum and start digging right into everything and disassembling all the stuff that we need to before we install the head studs oil pump gears and valve springs and of course you saw me wheel over this sonic tools box this of course is thanks to garagetools.com.au they're one of the biggest helpers of the channel providing all the tools all the goods um so we've just been using those tools to disassemble this engine i have seen in street machine tv uh where he goes ahead and he doesn't remove these plenum bolts and he removes them from the head itself and i can see how that'd be so much simpler because taking these out was very timely um, but we're gonna have better access to just zap these bolts off now out of the head and just drop the plenum out the harness is also going through this little sensor back here which is a little bit of a pain because you got to remove this plate to get the rest of the harness out so we'll do that when we get back but we are about to head to get some new tires for the EF Falcon so I dropped them off before we went ahead and we um, dropped off the rear tires to get refitted with some 205 65 15 babies freshies and yeah we're gonna take this thing to get roadworthy today uh, it's looking really nice right now <laughs> it's just just chilling on some jack stands so i'm super excited um this video is gonna be very technical rather than just all fun so i think nathan's also gonna pop by later as well that'll ruin the technical side of things because nathan's here <laughs> actually no his, his knowledge is pretty good so probably better than mine honestly through this whole process i hope you guys really learn something from all this and tackle this yourself like if you want to barrel swap something just follow me and uh i'll get you there i just quoted eminem <laughs> So I didn't have to remove the uh, intake plenum to remove the harness, but there you go. Spaghetti. We have not been able to take off the intake manifold because I've got some distractions here. I got Drake. What you doing here? You falcon over there. Oh, did you buy an AU2? Um, yeah, look, black one. He wishes. <laughs> he wishes. You. Anyway, we got another Roach boy here as well. What's up, Mr. Roach? Heard you got some specialty tools for me. I do. Heard of the kindness of his heart, Daniel. Awesome. So that's Daniel's tool. This is not Daniel's. Jack's tool. No. No, Jack, Jack borrows off Daniel and, and, you know. Jack Daniel. Yeah. All right, six. So that's the harmonic balancer puller tool. I don't think, I don't know if it's called a harmonic balancer. Is that thing in the, is that called the harmonic balancer yeah. on a timing chain engine? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you haven't seen it's like almost stripped. I got the harness off just then. So the lower plenum is the same as a, as any other turbo or NA. Well, the difference is because it doesn't have the ports for the injectors. So you got to remove it anyway. There's like, you're not going to like get a machine shop oh, to port true. that out. Yeah. Wait, wait. So what do you change? You change the bottom or the top half? Both. Yeah. Oh, I thought one. Okay, never mind. I'm pretty sure you can change both. Maybe you can retain the the top part of it, but the throttle body is 100% different. Like, mm. look at it. 
So this is unlike any other harmonic balancer tool that I've ever seen before. It's like barra specific and the way that it works is I guess it goes in and then you turn it around and it's like a lock and then you can uh, use the pull. It, it looks like it's better than every other tool. It's, it's much simpler, but- Well, it's also about 10 times as much as every other tool. Yes, because it's $200. 300. From Ford or is that a- No, it's just a- The reason why these are so good is because they're machine from one bit of steel. So it's obviously gonna be stronger. Interesting. Well, thank you, Daniel, for loaning me your tool. How are you 20 bucks? <laughs> Balancer off. It's been a few hours. We actually went and got the uh, EF Falcon all roadworthy. It's pretty dark, so I'm not gonna bother bringing it. Oh, I, may as well, I may as well bring the camera out here, but my lens is really, really bad. But yeah, the thing's passed roadworthy. We did a bit of work to it to get it passable. And yeah, she's got the new tires on there and she passed. So, so we're gonna keep working on the barra. Yeah, I'm just gonna keep taking off part of the plenum and all that. I don't know, just may as well strip as much weight down as possible. So, so the engine stand isn't too stressed out. Junk. Absolute junk. We are done tearing down the barrel for today. Have a sus. I've probably said have a sus too many times this video. It's been a long day. Very long day. But we got the hot side off. You can see everything is completely off on this side. We also have, of course, removed the cold side too. And we have removed everything. Everything from this barra. There's still more stuff that we need to remove to get to the uh, valve stem seals, the valve springs, uh, the head studs. Got to remove a bunch of this stuff. It's like a, you may as well do the head gasket job. Um, I don't know. I, I need to ask you guys that. Do I do the head gasket on this thing? It is an MLS and apparently they're stout. And um, also want to know if you guys know how the hell do you run the power steering on the EF Falcon with the Barra power steering pump? Is that is that possible? Is the drive going to be different and is it going to cause like the power steering pump to blow up or something? I don't know, but <laughs> future X problems. But yeah, have a sass. This thing's looking sick. It's funny as well, the dimensions of this thing, the head is like almost bigger in height than the block. Like, brr. Probably gonna wrap this video up for today because there's just been so much going on. But hope you guys learned something along the way of, of tearing this thing down. There's a bunch more that we need to do. It's pretty self-explanatory. You can literally see every single bolt that you need to remove in order to remove everything. There's nothing out of the ordinary like on a BMW. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, very simple engine to work and I'm, I'm pretty happy about that. I want to remind you guys, if you want to help support the channel, the best way of doing so is heading over to bankyspec.com and copying some Banky merch. And a lot of you guys don't really know what the Banky brand is. I feel like I need to go in depth and explain it. A TLDR of it is that it's a Japanese sort of saying. So there's Zenki, there's Kuki, and something that's below both of those is Benki. So that's what we came up with and <laughs> that's the reason why we have the BankySpec.com website. So go check it out. We've got some new merch coming very soon. Our t-shirts, hoodies are on the way. A new drop is happening and of course we do still have heaps of remaining old stock. So yeah, go check it out. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Keen for some Barra stuff, keen for uh, some drag stuff and I'll talk to you all soon. Catch you later.